Essence Celadine. So I'm sorry, none of you got that right. The color of your tie? The color of my tie. Yeah. Okay. Because like, without context, that five times you weren't on camera when you said that word, so it was very yeah. confusing. Yeah. So now you have to wait until you see it next time or rewind the video if you're on YouTube or something. Either way, we are into the game. I apologize for the off topic, but we are here with TSM once, a ban, once again banning with this rocket and then respecting Pobos' Twisted Fate for game two. Immortals actually banning the same two things they banned last time. So it's not yeah. just a blue side Azir thing, it's just a Bjergsen Azir thing. Yeah, well, I think it's one of those things they at the current time don't want to play either side of the matchup of Azir versus Velkaz, and they're just worried about the straight up team fighting power of Azir, in my opinion. Yeah. I think the big question coming into this draft is really whether or not Immortals was serious about the triple eighty carry comp and if they think that just needs a few tweaks and will still be a great strategy or if they just go to something completely different. And look at this. So the Rise ban dropped off the table for a Rek'Sai ban into Rainover. Whoa. Kindred off the table. We know that the junglers last time were Graves and Gragas. Those are actually still up. So it's TSM, I think, I'm trying to figure out what the logic is in, in yeah. that it would push Rain over off of Gragas in the first place. Rise also removed off the table. That was a red side. It looks like now mandatory ban. No one's willing to let the other team pick it early. There's a lot of junglers up for sure. So I don't even know if they need to prioritize it. Previous patches would say you need to pick Nidalee right away. But that might not be the case here with Nidalee, Graves, <laughs> and Gragas all available after the nurse. I feel like this the is manor the manor This is the manor hover, hover. hover. But, um, mm -hmm. I mean, Pop Poppy is available. Uh, that's something that was off the table last time. Um, definitely something we could see. Nidalee also available that wasn't around uh, last last time through champ select. So uh, be interested to see if they are going to pick that up. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Nidalee as yeah. uh, Svenskeren is very strong and it's so high priority. So that is going to be locked in. Um, but yeah, speaking to what you're saying, you know, do they commit to this 380 carry thing? You know, we saw uh, for for the series yesterday, you know, the Tristana, right? The Tristana getting like banned and banned and banned against CLG, and then it comes out, loses <laughs> once, and they're like, nope, JK, yeah. <laughs> it was just a prank, bro, we're not yeah. actually gonna play it. And the thing about these teams that have been through the, that, that have had the buys, they've had three weeks of scrims in this kind of closed environment where they can get a different view of what the meta is based on what we've seen. And like, obviously, for the scrim block CLG was in, Rageblade Trist was crushing it. Yep. And that's why they thought it was huge. And at least for Immortals, I'd imagine they had a lot of success running Lucian top lane. And they can do yep. an incredibly similar thing here. It looks like no chain is for Immortals at the start of the draft. They could still tweak it later because those are absolutely flex picks. Exactly. Both teams are internally consistent. TSM red side banned Nidalee, fearing it as a first pick, then first picked it here in game two. Immortals, I guess they dropped a poppy ban to add Rise into the mix, but otherwise Corky and Karma were two of their first pick picks in the first place anyway. So it seems like right away there's no obvious tell that the teams are changing their core strategies. You know, and I have to say, it's like, you know, if this is working so well in their scrim blocks with the, the 380 carry comp, it's not like Maokai is some like revolutionary thing that they shouldn't have played <laughs> against, right? This is not some, so, oh my God, they thought of the Maokai? Yeah. Who would have ever thought of playing a tank <laughs> against 80 carries, right? So I feel like it has to be something that they would be beating. Otherwise, yeah. you can bring it to the stage, right? So do they actually say, you know what? We don't care about Poppy. We don't care about that tank. We can just yeah. go right back to it. Or Echo. Like, I'm yeah. really surprised that Hanser ha didn't just pick Echo here. Obviously, every team has their own experience, and the amount of Echo we've seen in the LCS that is victorious is obviously slanting our judgment to think that he's just unbeatable or yeah, sure. just incredibly strong as a first pick, which I think is true, but these two teams do, do not think that. Even its win rate, though, is super, super high. It's at like 57, 58 percent or something like that in, in high ELO solo right. right now, so it's definitely not just pro player successful, it's just successful everywhere. Oh, well, small change coming in through here for this one, though, and it's going to be Gangplank into what almost definitely is the top lane at this point. Uh, I guess you can still flex things around, but yeah, theoretically GP for Huni, I mean, it's one of his better champions for sure, and this was banned all th five games against CLG, specifically by Liquid. This time around, being left up and Immortals grabbing it. Yeah, I mean, I want to say it's for sure top lane, but after the last game, you never really know. You know, it's True. possible that it could be AD, Corky, Support, Karma, right? Yeah. So there yeah. is still that possibility. And after you see something that wacky uh, from TSM side, they have to keep that in mind, right? It, it is theoretically possible. They could still even run Graves in the top lane and have their composition still make sense. Right. Uh, and they'd have a good mix of magic and physical damage, too. So this is... One thing that Immortals has definitely done is they're flex picking more than anyone else. Like these champions, especially when they're showing that they're willing to throw a traditional marksman in the top lane, makes them impossible to, to counter pick, which for TSM kind of just means they do standard stuff. If they lock in the Zed, they're open to a lot of flex picking that Immortals could throw at them. Okay, Zed, Alistair, semi blind pick in the mid they lane. They can still Here's pick whatever that they want. It's going to be 
Oh, the Ergot. The instant lock Ergot. And Ergot young POB. is fantastic against that. This is something that Keith uh -huh. used to play, and I've seen other people play this as well. Um, double, you can play double exhaust. I certainly expect Pobelter to swap that. He's, he's sitting on Ignite now. Um, but this is this is a hard counter. Pick. This is something yes. that absolutely smashes Zed, or should, yeah. assuming equal play. And recently, Urgot got something he hasn't received in a while. He got a buff. So when he uses his ultimate, oh, he actually gets to terrify with when he flies into the rest of the team, which will be really important if they can terrify someone into a gangplank ultimate or a gangplank barrel or something crazy. Sure. Like, this pick is actually arguably stronger than it was last year when it could be used as a counter pick. Yeah. And that's the value of all this flex picking, right? You normally don't pick a Zed blind, but he's thinking, okay, Corky or Karma, I can handle either one of those, but no, they're going to swap it around on you, and they do. And it's interesting, too, because all both these teams picked blue side for all their options. They wanted to get the first pick power, but we're seeing the last pick actually be pretty valuable. The Maokai, though not revolutionary, came in and kind of broke apart the composition. Now the Urgot coming in. It's one of the benefits of being in the playoffs. You can prep for your opponent. They know Zed is a big champion for Bjergsen. The Urgot's ready. We'll see if Pobolta can play it well. And now as we get ourselves into the game, you guys at home should tweet at LOL Esports with hashtag IMT win or hashtag TSM win for which team you think is going to take this one down. The Urgot counter to the Zed. It's back. It's like it's 2014 all over again. And Pobolta could be very happy to play this one out here as we get ourselves out of picking bands and into game two. Against many expectations, TSM took game one, but maybe it gets bounced back. Yeah, and some of our questions have been answered here. Obviously, Immortals has done some tweaking to their champion select. They're not about all triple marksmen. Here, they do have Huni on a physical damage carry, and really, the counter pick is the coolest part of this champ select, I'd say. Yeah. Urgot. Anytime Urgot's in, it's the coolest part of champ select. Doesn't matter where it is. Yeah, and honestly, I, I really like Immortals draft. I think it was super intelligent the way they do uh, keep all these flexes open, and I'm pretty excited to see how it works out for him. Uh, we'll see how it plays out here in this one. Bjergsen says that Pobalter is always in the right place at the right time. I think Pobalter just always does a good job at just being at every single fight that Immortals takes. He always moves really fast. He's always uh, paying good attention to wherever they're fighting and what kind of play they're making, which means that Immortals just is always there first. They just always have one more person for each fight. So you always have to watch out whenever they're picking fights around the map. Yes. Well, we'll see. If it's one more person, it means Bjergsen's not there, and I trust that he's one of the most active players as well in League of Legends, so we'll see how that roaming situation comes in. Bjergsen will probably be a dedicated split pusher, and you have to wonder which lane he'll be able to split against. Gangplank, probably not too hard, but Urgot will be almost impossible. Yeah, this is also the first Urgot we've seen in the 2016 season, not just in NA, but in EU or the LCK or the LPL. Just people haven't been playing Urgot at all. So really, this is a deep pocket pick for yeah. Belter. And I would say this time, the shoe's on the other foot. Immortals are the ones with the, the powerful team fight. I think that their composition is easier to execute this time. When you add in champions like Nidalee, like Zed, it's pretty difficult in an all-in 5v5 to actually play those champions properly. Definitely agree. Interesting to see uh, Thunderlords was the option here for the Urgot. Certainly, it's not too hard to stack the damage in, but didn't go for a tank keystone, which I'm actually a little bit surprised at as an Urgot. Yeah. You should be able to proc Thunderlords just by landing your E. Uh, because it is a damage over time. I believe application of dots counts as one stack for Thunderlords, and the ticks don't do anything for it. All right, I just know Gatling Gun for Corky. Yeah, it's it a well. different type of spell. Yeah, there are some different mechanics of that, yeah. like Morgana Pool, for example. Right, a, a ground-based um, dot just reapplies, whereas an, like an applied dot counts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Either way, if he lands a lock on the two keys, couple cues will kill him. Proc the Thunderlords. Well, so it's the extra trigger bit of damage. No, kill yeah. him straight up. Yeah, just instant broken. dead to an E. Just. That that's that sounds good. Works. Yeah. <laughs> why has he got a 43% win rate? That's weird. Because he's not played mid lane against Zed every game. Yeah, that's people why don't play him as a counter pick where his matchups are really good. Yeah. So there you go. All right, Hanser and Huni doing a bit of battle. We do have uh, Australian Standard here. 1v1 on the bot side, 2v2 up in the top. And I want to see now how this game does settle out. Last game was a lane swap game, if I remember properly. So now we get to see the players test their metal. And I got to say, Wild Turtle and Adrian probably have a much easier time in the 2 on 2. 2 poke versus Alistair. Yep, definitely. But obviously, the Alistar Callista combo is something that is incredibly powerful. Uh, you know, once you get that six, it enables tower diving. Um, you know, there is a lot of, of kind of squishiness here for the Karma, right? If the Karma does get caught by a combo later oh, yeah. on, you definitely can get popped. I also wonder what type of pressure Immortals is going to want to put on the top lane, knowing they're against an Italy jungle. And I think so much of this early game could be triggered by Sven Skarin versus Rainover. And who can get the edge? Last game, Sven Skarin was able to take both of Rainover's red buffs in the lane swap situation and stop Rainover from really having a large impact. Nidalee, I've seen have a lot of success when your team actually picks weaker lanes because the Nidalee then gets the jungle pressure 
and bails you out of your weaker lanes. Yep. We just got to see Thunder Lord's applied. Pobelter got E into two Qs, and even though Bjergsen tried to run away, still lost a third of his health bar. That'll probably continue to happen so far in this game. Pobelter oh, holding a three-minute lead. Ooh, yeah, Yellowstar missing the headbutt pulverize. He's got a 13-second cooldown until that Q comes back up. And it means more time for mortals to try to bully around. They will have a slight CS lead as casters go down. But otherwise, a fairly close 2 on 2, to be honest. I'm, I'm a little bit surprised to see Pobelter didn't actually rune armor, and he did stay with the Ignite. Uh, so he only has 29 armor. He has much less armor than like everyone on his team. And he didn't go exhaust, so very confident in his ability just to stay alive and I guess yeah. straight up kill his lane opponent. Once he hits level 6, he's going to be able to get a bunch of armor and MR just from casting yeah. ultimate onto Bjergsen, and I, I'm, guess, I'm yeah. guessing he's just going to think he's low, and there will be Frozen Art as part of his core build. Plan. Exactly. His core build has a lot of resist, so I wouldn't be surprised as he's scaling health seals out of him as a mm -hmm. general rune type. In fact, that's yeah. what, what Huni ran uh, last game on... Uh, his uh, top lane Lucian. Top lane Lucian, yeah. Soul laner's scaling health. You have to be in a really dire situation to not run that rune right now. It's just yeah. the best. Is it oh, important? here we go. Attempted fight on the top side. Barrels pop, but Houdini does not dodge into the skill shot, so he's not going to burn the flashy. No, oh, he's going to burn it, but why bother? Oh! That's why, but he still goes down to first blood. Now, can they trade back onto Haunts or Gragas is trying, but there's so much damage out of Svenskeren's Nidalee. Meanwhile, top side two on two coming in. Exhaust onto Wild Turtle. Haunter did go down, but the re-engage. Ren will not quite kill Wild Turtle. He will stay alive, but still TSM up in kill. Ooh. That was close, and I mean, was... ESM has to be still a little bit scared here. Yellowstar has his flash. He could look for a, a Q flash here pretty soon, but Pobelter is heading up to the top lane. Yeah, he had pressure in the mid lane to push him off, so all the chaos of these lanes haven't stopped yet. They need to they pick should know this. About this. should be telling him, but no, they go in! Misses the crucial skill shot. Here come the teleport in for one side. He doesn't have it. There's the first kill. Yellowstar's next up. The lock-on is easy, and Pobelter gets the double kill. Right place, right time. The just crab roam up top, his four little legs. That's, they, there's no way they should have gone in for that fight. Yeah, how did TSM not expect that? That was really shocking to me. I mean, yeah. they saw that he was pushed in. They know that he's not in the mid lane. You know, where could he be? Maybe in the top lane where you're pushed up. And uh, TSM makes a pretty huge mistake there, kind of throwing away their early advantage. Yeah, because their early advantage could have been gained by this gank down in the bottom lane. Hauntzer gets the steadfast presence up for the move speed. It's not like Huni's going to dash out of it. And Sven Skaren gets a lot of damage through. Then I. Credit Hauntzer, he goes for the flash and gets the kill because even though Rainover does finish this one off, Sven Skaren's level 5 and is dumping damage down on him the whole time. So in order for Rainover to get that kill, as Hauntzer re-engaged in a bunch of minions, Ooh, that was close too. Sven Skaren yeah. got it. Another close one, but uh, that one didn't have the risk of the Urgot roam coming down or a teleport coming in to impact the lane. Whereas when you're looking at the side of TSM, like even if Huni would have respawned towards the back side of that, they could have been teleported on. Oh. But that's big. Look at the trap on Adrian. He's almost instantly going to go. Oh. The he Woo. A body slam. What a play from Sven Skarin. That was super sick. Sven Skarin is on for the playoffs. Hoping to make his second career LCS final here in this one. Sven Skarin has always been good in the playoffs, even last year when he was on SK Gaming, he had some amazing performances in the playoffs, and his regular season was not looking like this. That was the flashiest play I think we've seen Sven make all yeah, year. I think literally. Incredible, and <laughs> I mean, Adrian gonna get caught out here, not expecting the yellow star Sven Skarin combo, and in comes Rain over to the rescue, but boom, right over top, able to finish him off. Brilliant stuff uh, from Sven Skarin. And I mean, oh man, you know, looking at the mid lane, if you're Bjergsen, you're, you're pretty sad right now because Urgot yeah. got two kills off a of Rome top. You're kind of just like, team? <laughs> like, team? I'm already in the counter comp, yes. you know? I have more CS in my matchup, question mark? Yep. Uh, well, this matchup did Rome up to get yeah. a double kill. Uh, this is not important, Jack. <laughs> I'm feeding him in CS. How could you get I'm him winning two lane, first? guys. <laughs> Well, unfortunate stuff here. TSM, though, overall, you got to say, they can't feel too bad about this game. So far, no. it's very close. They're actually winning by over 1,000 gold overall. Uh, a lot of that is, is Nidalee. I mean, Nidalee it's, really is yeah. going to be uh, power farming early. And since Karen is, is playing Nidalee, you know, the way it's meant to be played, he's bullying out the other jungler. He's roaming around. He's getting ganks. He's farming hard. He's doing everything right right now. He's up in CS. He's up in kills. And right now, he's, he's straight up out playing Rainover. He is straight about playing Rainover. It's really impressive to see. Good stuff for Sven Skarin. Finally, some competition for the Immortals players who had been just dominating everybody for pretty much the entire year. And everybody else, everybody else in North America finally stepping up. Sven Skarin dodges the wards, hops over clean. the pit, and he's coming to help. Although, get with a the dive. way Hauntzer's position, you'd think Huni would expect this. 
And he gets a barrel chain down to happen. He's gonna go for the play, ulting in right there, and Hans are taking plenty of punishment, but guess what, Sven Skarin will not be stopped, gets another kill. That was actually really slick, although it was a dangerous dive. The point blank off and out of Hanser lined up perfectly with the spear from Sven Skarin, which let them get all of their damage down onto Huni. They also know he went Sheen Call, so he was very low on max health. They gotta get out of there. Yellowstar's gonna have to flash yeah, away. Yellowstar oh, has they swap double lift out. He will not get to flash away. Goes down, can't now ulti his teammate out. That's gonna be easy pickup now on to this poor Alice who's got oh. to go, but one kill turn around. Bjergsen, good roam by him. Another one for Wild Turtle. Two for one on the bot side, favor for Mortals. Yeah, greedy play by the TSM bot lane, though. Just kind of disrespecting Immortals going in for uh, that blue buff. And here goes Bjergsen. In for the play. Deathmark is on. And that's going to be getting the kill right there. Pop goes the Deathmark. Shut down for Bjergsen. Thanks for the blue buff. Hey, you can be in a counter matchup, but that doesn't mean you can't fight back. Paul Belter did not have his ultimate, which could give him our magic resist at the very end of that fight. But we talk about the greedy play from TSN's bottom lane. They just done a dive top lane, so they know they have no jungle pressure, and they're going right into the so face of Reyno. Double can ult and flash out. Oh, he has no ult, sorry, but he could have flashed out. But he gets nope. swapped in by Urgot, and he, he could have flashed out in that ult because he got the ult off right before he died. Yeah, and that's where Yellow Star pops out on. So that was the play they were going for for the escape. But Pobelt just beat him there by a fraction of a second. Yeah, and on the because he did side. flash actually. Yeah, he did flash, and yeah, take it back. He did have ulti. Pierce able to kind of sneak in and pick up the kill on. That Adrian was nice. And, uh, picks up the blue buff off Urgot as well. So a nice transfer there from Double Lift. <laughs> <laughs> that was the, the long con. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And of course. This Nidalee has continued to make a lot of great plays. 3-0 and 1. Finally, those double that those two kills for Bjergsen were the first kills that Svenskern wasn't a part of finally. Because he was busy killing someone else on the top side. Definitely a huge semifinal so far from Svenskern himself on this Nidalee. Now pushing in. His haunts are doing plenty of damage on a Huni. And this is the moment of the game where TSM needs to be punishing Huni. For all the regular season, Rainover and Huni have been crushing their opponents. But once again here, Svenskern is ahead of Rainover, so. He can't give Huni the jungle attention, so he might not have the chance to scale up on Gangplank here. He's trying with wow. his call, and he's got Rain over behind him, but this is some real aggression from Sven Skarin. The knockback is in. Sven Skarin is... Oh! oh what an ultimate from Hauntzer! <laughs> <laughs> Pulling Sven Skarin out of there. Wow, that gank was looking so ghastly, but Hauntzer turned it around. Beautiful stuff with the TSM top winner to save his teammate. Yeah, overall, not a good play from TSM. They spent a roam by Bjergsen. They didn't get a kill, and they had to expend ultimates. Yeah. But it's better than it could have been, if not for that great ultimate from Hanser. Sven Skarin didn't spend his nice flash. Play. Worth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Up Upsummoner spells. Yep. Easy. The Got the flash, gone. boys. Uh-oh, oh. here we go. Here's Hanser. On to the bot side. On to Adrian. Bit of slow coming out from Hanser. Yellow star on the wings. Doesn't go in for the play just yet. Well, Turtle. Valkyrie's pretty Wait. well. Have a pulverize. Does land into Atrium, but do they really have the damage? A Mantra and Spire Shield comes out. They're pretty yeah. good to fight here in this one. Yelsar. He's, he's just way too far ahead. I mean, yeah. no one was going to be able to follow up on that. Uh, uh, so but here comes Sven Skarin. Plays the long con. another person to the gank. Javelin on a wild turtle. Has to flash and does get away. Doesn't take any damage, but now onto the backside. Ooh, right over there. Did not need to be there. He turned around, ran into four, and died for it. Yeah, rain over wrong place, wrong time. I mean, he just kind of walked in and killed himself there, and, yeah. and he's looking like a little bit out of sorts this game. Yeah, he is not looking good. He, he's Full so stop. rarely in a position where he's behind the enemy jungler yeah. that mm -hmm. I think it's very hard to adjust your play style to playing from behind. It's a much different mindset, especially on Gragas. But Sven Skarin is three levels ahead of Rain over in this game. That's this is insane. insane. There was only one game I could think of this entire season where Rainover actually did not look good, and I think that was the Rumble game. The, the one game yeah, he pulled out yeah. Rumble, and then he was like, nope, never again. <laughs> yeah. Well, Gragas is one of his core champions, so he yeah. needs to be able to do that well here. This play was a canceled uh, teleport from Huni because he would have been right in the face of Wild Turtle. And this was, yeah, Yellow Star. This worked. This should be the end. This, this should be it. And Yellow Star is way ahead on the play. He burns a lot of stuff here. And Rainover is coming down to stop them, plus they have a pick ward. So I guess Wild Turtle and Adrian think they can stick around for farm. But then a really fed Nidalee comes around the backside and crucially lands a long range spear onto Wild Turtle, which threatens with a whole bunch of damage. But like you say, what is Rainover doing there? There's still three other people down there by the turret. He could have just backed away. Yeah. No kills would have happened, and yeah. they would have been fine. And I mean, it just puts <laughs> Sven Skarin even further ahead. He's just been bullying him completely, <laughs> even stealing away the wraith. So. I mean, Sven Skarin is on fire right now. It, he's picking up right where he left off in the semi uh, quarterfinals against C9. Right. It's just, this is not the Sven Skarin we had seen for the rest of 2016, no. but apparently the month of April is the month of TSM doing well in playoffs now. 
Seven and five, up 3,000 gold. And who would have guessed it against Immortals? That's happening right now. Rainover and Hooney. The big all-stars of this roster looking at another two on two. Yellow starting to up as well. It's a three on two on this one. Explosive cast separates, but Hooney taking a lot of damage. Shield comes in and a dodge shot, but another ulti in for Hanser. Adrian will land the root, but he's going to get attacked by this Nidalee. Wildcats on the loose. Sven Scarrett now forced to run away. A big shield on Nagragas does not find a way in. Does the strength of the Aegis uh, mastery, does that actually show? Because he actually, yeah. that gave it away then. He was sitting in yes. the bush with no ward. Uh, Poppy actually killed the cannon, and the strength of the Aegis mastery kind of showed that little green mm -hmm. As the zip heal or whatever. Yeah. dipped towards him. Yeah. Healing yeah. an Aegis teammate. Yeah, it does. Not the luckiest play, but even so, the focus. Oh, Smited. I never get right that over. One. All right, well, now Sven Skirin. Yeah, he's taking some damage, and he was literally on fire after that one. but. Able to walk away with his pride and some safety because Doublelift is now soloing the blue buff on the bot side. And it's the second time in a row Doublelift is taking that away from Immortals. This time, maybe not an elongated buff transfer to Bjergsen. But still a solid game by TSM, who continued to look just very impressive. Game one, it snowballed away pretty fast, and it was some good stuff by Immortals. This time around, it's just TSM in control. Yeah, I think this game is also interesting because uh, this time TSM is more of the team that wants to snowball ahead early, whereas Immortals is going to want to scale up for Gangplank to actually have items, finish his call, mm -hmm. have more impactful barrels and fights, and Pobelter will want to get the armor so he can be a shutdown champion for Zed. But now it's TSM's opportunity to try and take an early lead and snowball it to victory. Sven Skarin is really putting as much pressure as possible, deep ward control uh, in here, as well as trap control, because he doesn't have a sight stone, and they get that top lane turret, that gives them a true turret to zero advantage. Yeah, and I mean, I, I do think Immortals definitely has that, that better scaling comp, but I will say as a caveat, it's not even nearly as extreme as last game, right? Yeah. This is not like a hard timer. It's just uh, a higher execution barrier for TSM and late game. Definitely agree, and so far they've been executing pretty damn well, especially when you got a Zed. Execution is practically in his name, so we'll see how much more TSM can do. As they continue to look super dominant, four and a half thousand gold is their lead at 15 and a half minutes in. Definitely a sizable advantage for the blue team here. Looking to maybe go 2-0 up in the semifinal series and face their destiny of CLG in the finals. They can make it happen. Yeah, I mean, Nidalee is a disgusting amount ahead. He's basically an entire Rylai's ahead of his opponent, yeah. which is just <laughs> ridiculous. Like, you don't see that kind of a gold lead. No, it is 2,600 gold. Ouch. Uh, 16 minutes into the game. Yeah. So, yeah. That's over half of TSM's overall advantage to Immortals, which is a blessing and a curse. It means he's that much stronger than everyone else, but if he mispositions and gets blown up by all the displacements that Immortals could throw at him, like a Gragas Alt and uh, an Urgot Ultimate, all of TSM lead, TSM's lead could go out the window very quickly in that fight in particular. As of now, though, we have no reason to believe he's going to be making that mistake. He's been playing out of his mind. Yeah, and I think that's also why you go Rylai's. Uh, you know, why you get to the HE, but oh Bjergsen going for the all-in. All right, we're going to go for the counterattack right here. Pobot, they're putting in the big shield, and he will not net a death mark. But now there's a Nidalee, and that's going to be Sven Skarin saying thank you very much for the gold. Danish power, he and Bjergsen take down the kill on the Pobelter. And Pobelter just hasn't hit that point yet. He started with the tier, didn't finish into an early man immune. He's going for a Black Cleaver early. He's just kind of stacking these components, but he hasn't turned on any items. So, like, maybe his champion kit should be countering Bjergsen. But Bjergsen's built the efficient items. He's got his Ghost Blade completed. And, yeah, uh, Gangplank Ultimate came in, and Nidalee came in for one, so they both got a little help. This counter's not working as of yet. I just really think it was a mistake to not take Exhaust. I mean, yes, Ignite is nice as far as kill pressure in lane, but the Exhaust is so ridiculously effective against Zed. And not having that, I think, it is, is really hurting him big time. Yeah, it might have been a huge mistake. Then you're seeing Pobalter not able to win the matchup. And he was, I don't want to say gifted, but he had earned two kills very early on yeah. by that top lane roam. He was, by all rights, ahead of Bjergsen. And it never looked this way so far. This Zed 2-0-1. Massive props to him. He's not all of the reason that TSM is winning, but certainly doing well when he probably shouldn't be. Yeah, also pretty critical that Bjergsen's level 12 to Pobelter being level 10. Ouch. So Pobelter doesn't have level 2 of his ultimate for more r and And he also gets his ult off after he's taken the majority of the damage from Zed. Uh, then because Sven Skarin comes in, he can't finish him off with a lock-on. On top of the exhaust, the, the item build, you get such a bonus efficiency when you complete an item, whether it be a Black Cleaver or a Frozen Heart or a Man Immune, and now finally he finishes a Black Cleaver, but thats I don't think that's the item you want to rush on Urgot anyway, so a lot of questions about this build. It's CDR, and I would have to check the numbers to see if you could ever hope to get two shields off against Zed in a fight, but right now that Terra Capacitor is an 11-second cooldown. 
even with the 30 CDR, he's got an item. So it's not like he's getting two in a conventional all-in. It's more damage, yeah. but he needs yeah. the durability stats. Uh, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I'm not that much of an Urgot player, but I do believe it's a certain amount of CDR you want to hit so you can yep. get the amount of lock-ons with your Q. Yeah, so exactly. I think it's like you get the extra, extra one. Yeah. So yeah. I think that is what he's rushing. He's going for the fourth hit, but like that would be an isolated laning phase. So that's yeah. when you get really obnoxious. You rush a bunch yeah. of CDR or land the one E on you. Now I'm just going to walk back and spam Q over and over again. Ha, ha, ha. But it's a split-push scenario. That's not what's happening. Uh, so I think the CDR breakpoint is much less important at this stage. And he should be worried about actually being able to 1v1 the thing he tried to counterpick. Yeah. So far, he's then able to. TSM, 6,000 gold their lead, roughly as much as Immortals was ahead in the previous one. Actually, more so, I think, at this point, because uh, it was pre Baron. We're only 19 minutes in, and Solomon are doing great. Looking now at another red buff, Steel Sven Scaring in the top side. Rain over will realize there are two Ooh. enemies up there, and immediately jumps away. Easy smite for Sven Scaring, grabs that one. And now into the mid lane. Yeah, easy combo and a wild turtle. Gets a big shield, though. Adrian's around. Turn it around. Still no great damage. Oh, he has to back away from the turret. Zed just walks on right away. Exhaust. Death mark is almost enough, but he should survive. Oh. Yes, he will. Good shield in by Adrian, who is, I believe, maxing that ability as he normally does. But now Hanser into the backside. Wants to, and he forces a flash by doing so. Pop the ult doing a bit more damage. Yeah, I mean, Immortals, look at all well the behind. summoners that Immortals had to use there as well. Yeah. DP ulti was used also, and summoners across the board are now five. down, you know, five summoners. Pretty brutal. Yeah, speaking of numbers, four health is what Wild Turtle had after <laughs> that death mark procced. That's two more than they needed. Three more than they needed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, easy. Three more? You can live with one health. Yeah, see that? Yeah, yeah. He well, corrected that, I corrected myself. Super I corrected sick. myself. <laughs> yeah, he got sorry. there. Don't worry about it. Math is hard, Jet. This, yeah. this goes to show you, by the way, whenever I'm like, oh, Optimal damage builds and optimal items. Yeah, <laughs> four damage in semifinal. Yeah. Just think, if you had done bad runes. There you go. Yeah. Sometimes it matters, guys. Yep. One armor seal would have been the difference between life and death there. Almost yeah. definitely. I mean, at what point, if you're Immortals, are you just getting really nervous? Because you're already yeah. down a game, right? Mm -hmm. And this game's looking ugly. And it's it's that's something that really does uh, go into mentality. I mean, of yeah, uh, double for saying, oh, we're gonna tilt him, right? Um, and yeah, he's joking around, but at the same time, it, it's a lot of added pressure. You start to feel like, oh crap, we lose this one. We're one game from elimination. We're down 2-0, uh, and it really does add a lot more. Yeah, 17 and one regular season, and they're running the risk of losing two games in a row in the playoffs. Like yeah. that's just not something this team has had to come back from. It's not like these players haven't had a bunch of experience. I mean, Huni and Rainover played to game five in a European LCS final in both splits and came out victorious. So they know how to fight through a series. Poe Belter fought through all the years of promotion tournaments. Like, he knows pressure. Like, those promotion tournaments are arguably more pressure than some of these NLCS semifinals. So, like, the players themselves can do it. But as a team, as a unit, as this year with these champions and this combination, they haven't had to come back from that. And this game, like you say, is not looking good. Yeah. Uh, this could very well be a 2-0 series for TSM if they can get the split push going with Zed. And I mean, uh, on the other side of things, TSM has got to be riding such a high. Three straight yeah. wins to finish off C9, and now they're looking to win two in a row, you know, five straight playoff wins, potentially, if they can finish this out. And that's just such a boost of confidence. You can see the stat right up there, 12 buffs. The total number of buffs were taken away by enemy teams yeah. in their entire 18-game season, and it's seven so far yeah. in this game and a half. Uh, five of them in this game alone. So that's the level of counter I think it was regular season that versus Sven playoffs. Aaron is putting in. Yeah, exactly. Well, 18 regular oh, wait, season games. Game. 18 regular season games. 12 buffs were stolen. Two playoff games. Right. Seven. So it just goes to show the level of jungle pressure that Sven Scarin and the rest of TSM are putting on to reign over and Immortals here. And it's huge. This is a matchup that is super massive here. And you know, talking about players who needed to step up, Sven Scarin was definitely one of them. TSM went to grab top talent. That was the sort of drafting gold this season is let's grab the players from around the world who are the very best. Yellowstar, who shot called it to every EU LCS final actually ever. Yeah. Right? Let's grab Svensker and, you know, went to Worlds, had maybe a, a not great team supporting him in SK in the last year and jumps into TSM, you know, wants to get back into form, find a good replacement for Dyrus in the top lane. Hans are a, you know, one of the great up and comers here in North America. Yeah. Yet and at it's the same finally time, working. all year, they've also felt like this somewhat fragile team. Like, no communication, one mistake, and everything falls apart. They throw these 10,000 gold leads. Uh, but at least in the Cloud9 series and so far in this one, it feels like they're solving some of those communication issues. Everyone has trusted each other, 
and a lot of credit can be given to Weldon, their sports psychologist, but really, that's just in unlocking the players to reach their potential. You can't just have good psychology and suddenly a gold player is an LCS champion. Like, yeah. These guys are really playing for themselves, and they're doing very well so far in these first two games. And so much credit needs to go to Spensky. I mean, he, he's 4,000 gold up over Rain over now. He has yeah. a completed Zonia's. Uh, absolutely a monster this game. And, I mean, this is a guy who was kind of nowhere to be seen throughout the most of the regular season, and he has just completely turned on in the playoffs. Offs. And, you know, when, you, when you're looking at players to step up, people were saying, oh, you know, Bjergsen's got to go big, Doublelift's got to go big, right? And a lot of people right. weren't really talking about Spence Garen as the guy who could potentially be carrying them. Right. He's like, yeah, you're the dead weight. Everyone else try to yeah. carry it. Instead, he's the one doing all the heavy lifting. Because quite honestly, it's just assumed that he's going to lose to Rainover. Yeah. Everyone is just like, oh, yeah, Rainover is the best. He is actually amazing uh -huh. because he has been throughout the regular season. But here he's, they banned away his rec side. They first picked in Italy. His Grogus is okay, but it's a losing jungle matchup just based on the champions. Uh, and TSM is putting Sven Skarin in a situation to succeed. But with all that being said, it's 8,000 gold. Immortals does have a slight scaling advantage, and they're still yet to crack an inhibitor turret. This series has still got a lot of games to play. Does still at least have a game and a half to go. TSM, let's see how their assignments go. Bjergsen up to the top side. Black Cleaver, and Yomu's Ghost Blade done. The core Zed build is in effect, and he's going to go right away onto this fight in the top side. He wants Huni in the death fight. Oh, do it. whoa. The solo kill, thanks to Ignite and everything else. The final Q adding just enough damage. He gets the flash and the kill. Uh, that is brutal for Huni. Yeah, and he goes back to complete his Infinity Edge. So if that happens again, there's nothing that's going to keep Huni alive. Yep. Uh, it's a tricky situation of playing all these squishy top laners, and if he's ever isolated against Bjergsen, it's going to happen again. Well, Immortals look for the play. They get the knockback in on the Svenskeren, who flashes over to the right-hand side, but Adrian still tracks and gets through, but in comes Yellow Star, and he's going to kill a support right back into it. Adrian is gone. Two kills in a row now for TSM as they keep pushing forward. Bjergsen is in once again, and he picks up Raid over. Three in a row now for TSM. It's going from bad to worse for Immortals. They try to force a play while down their top laners. So not a good strategic call. They needed to be in defense mode. Yeah. And that could very well lead to Baron. Mooney's going to try something, though. He's TPing in here. He's got to poke him out. Oh he God. knows this could be the game he if they lose this Baron. and barrels. So there's a chance he gets something Oof. crazy. But they just have to hit the barrels. He First barrel chain doesn't work. Second that barrel chain doesn't far. work. Ultimate, maybe. I've seen gameplay call ultimate still Baron before. Pobelter's around. There's the knockback in. There's the first kill as well as the first Baron. And Pobelter doesn't even need to be here. Wild Turtle oh. looked the play, didn't get it, didn't get the pickoff. And never mind me, that Gangplank ultimate's on cooldown for yeah. another 40 seconds. So that was really ambitious of Immortals to think they could stop that Baron. And it just puts them farther in a hole. I mean, honestly, I don't think they could. They, they did think they could stop it. I think it's just one of those desperation plays. They knew they needed to try something. They're too far behind. They couldn't give up a free Baron. And this is the play that led to it. Yeah, I mean, Rainover gets a body slam onto Sven Skarin, and they think they were trying to chain it into an Urgot ultimate, but they can't get the isolation, and then the counter engage from TSM is just way too strong. Remember, it's going to be a 4v5 as Bjergsen comes around the back and picks up some easy kills. Yeah, red smite means nothing. Just gets the damage down regardless. And this is really just incredible stuff by TSM. The individual picks by Bjergsen, the rest of the team collapsing so rapidly and finding more and more kills here. Double lift, Hanser and Co. on point, chopping down these barrels before Huni can get any combos off. And there's really nothing coming out of Immortals. I mean, Huni is 0 4 and 0 this game. He's just been absolutely crushed so far. Yeah, it just has not been going the way you know we all expected. It's Svenskara putting on the pressure, putting Huni behind, and Hanser more than holding his own here as a TSM looks to extend their lead and take the first inhibitor turn. It's gonna go down, and now Rainover's caught. All by himself, just no one to follow up. Picked off, Immortals just not in the right place at the right time at all anymore. Had looked pretty good in the beginning with the double kill for Pobolter, but that all stopped going well rapidly. Mid inhib is down, now to the bottom lane inhibitor turret itself. This could be the game. I don't know if they're going to stop. They're up 14, 15k, and they are pushing. Well, double in hips, but they are going to back out for this one. Rain over respawns in 25 seconds. The TSM, they're going to reset one more time by the items and go for what is likely to be a game-winning push in a sub-30 minute game two victory over Immortals. Yeah, I mean, going to play it safe, recall, and no real reason to risk it. No. Um, they are just yeah. completely dominating this game, though. You know, more and more completed items coming in for TSM. It just seems like every time Sven Skarin bases, he just buys a full item. Now he has a full <laughs> Why not? Yeah, I mean, he's the only one who doesn't have a QSS who might need it, so that would be like a, a minor thing, but he can still pop his after afterward. he gets in from Pobelter. But yeah. uh, the one way that IMT gets a surprise initiation, Bjergsen and Doublelift can stop that. 
Two and Ambers down. Hooney unable to scale up this game. He's been completely shut down, as has Rainover. The two main carries for the last year and a half in the LCS, leading Fnatic to two championships as well. But then Yellowstar was also part of these teams, and he's been nothing in the regular season. Looked like one of the worst supports in North America, had the most deaths of all supports in the regular season. But here, TSM really all seem to be on the same page, at least in this game. 15,000 gold up, two inhibitors down, looking to push for the win. Let's see if they can find it. Here we go, top lane inhibitor, the last one left available, maximizing fantasy points and knocking all these turrets down. And here we go, rain over at half HP just from some cursory poke, now getting hit up again to one third, under a thousand HP, body slams away. And Immortals has to look to fight. I mean, you can't give up a third inhibitor and expect no. to stay in this game. They, they need to look for something, but uh, TSM knows it, and they're, they're playing intelligently around there. Here goes Bjergsen. Into the back line. Hooney nearly dies for that one. Eats a He does die. die. Still goes down. Bjergsen, the solo kill under the Nexus turrets, and that unlocks the rest of the base. He went back and built the Infinity Edge. He started on a Longsword. He's not changing his max health pool. Bjergs is going to kill him. And he does so. Now out of the top side goes the team to knock in. And there's a the kill picked up by godlike Sven Skarin. Would it be any other way? In goes Bjergsen. Thunderlord's triggers. Make that the ace. The final kill picked up for Doublelift. Looking for a second straight finals appearance on a different team. Two zeros to start for TSM. And what is happening where one TSM went away from having another TSM COG final? It's that plot armor. <laughs> the plot armor is real for TSM right here. Sixth seed coming into the playoffs and one win away from making their seventh consecutive NALCS final. Yeah, I mean, uh, coming into this, a lot of people would have said, yeah, it'll probably be 2 0 after two games. But not for yeah. TSM. <laughs> not for TSM. And yeah. they Immortals wouldn't wrong. <laughs> has got to be shaken. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely true. And you have to kind of go back and re examine what's happened here. It's TSM stepping up, first of all, right? Yeah. This is a much better team than we have been seeing in January, February, and March here. This squad looks so, so much better. Svenskeren, 20,000 damage, highest in the game, right? Outed everyone else on his team here. Doublelift's actually not even having to do anything here. You talk about players having to step up. Doublelift carry the dead weight. 6,000 damage. He only outdamaged Alistair and Karma. He doesn't. He's not required. That's fine. It's not like he's yeah. playing bad. He's just that's not where the action is. It's Svenskeren just killing Huni over and over again. It's Poe Belter, not able to stop what Bjergsen's doing with his Zed split push, who got blind picked and crushed everything. It's yeah, just a great game by TSM. And I mean, is Immortals just getting too creative, right? Both of these 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 comps with these strategies are not things that we've seen them use throughout the entire regular season. They yeah. went 17 and one in the regular season. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. At a certain point, you're outsmarting yourself. Yeah. But at th this is the weird thing. This is the tr the trap that Immortals is going to be in right now because with the 17 and one record, they were the only team to really be maining Soraka. They were the first ones to be playing a lot of Janna. They were one of two teams that ran carry top laners. So none of the stuff they were doing was standard across the league. So why would they think that when the meta changes? Is they have to be standard, right? They, they're going to have in their mind that they are smarter, that they are better, because they had been during the regular season. Right. But that doesn't look like the case right here. These compositions aren't working. TSM is shutting down their telegraphed styles with what Huni wants to do. Yeah. And they're either just going to have to do the same thing better or completely change it up. Exactly. And CLG just said, well, the new best style is playing the tanks and the poppy and the echo, and that worked out for them. We'll see if Immortals can find a style that works for them here. But TSM, obviously, very commanding.